Good morning, Promised Land Ministries. I want to thank you all for joining me and just so grateful to be here in the house of the Lord and to bring his message to you. Before we begin today, let, please join me in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, dear Lord, we're just so grateful for your presence in our life, dear Lord. Father, we're so grateful for um, the ability to pray to you, to come before you at any time in the name of Jesus, to come before you at the throne of grace in confidence, dear Lord, and to receive all that we need. Father, I lift up this time to you, dear Lord. This is your time. It is for your glory, dear Lord. I pray that you would open the hearts and the minds of those that are with hearing distance of my voice, dear God, and I pray that transforming power will come out of your servant, dear Lord, to enable your children to live lives that are overcoming all the challenges that come to them through all that we're experiencing in this life today. Father, I thank you for it. I thank you that I can be a mouthpiece for you, Lord. I thank you for all that you do and all that you are, dear Lord. We praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. My topic today is bringing heaven on earth. Um, this is a, a figure that I have. I'm going to name him Sam because he is representative of all human beings. And as you can see, he has a smile on his face because things are going well today. It's a nice sunny day out today and everything is going his way. So he's got his hands in his pockets and he's feeling pretty good. But then in his life, a pandemic came, a pandemic that has killed the lives of many people. And then in his life came violent protesting, destroying property. And on top of it, he lost his job, so he was unable to pay his bills. And on top of that, he didn't get to see his family because it was unsafe. Dire circumstances. And these dire circumstances have gotten Sam down, discouraged, feeling defeated. And so one day someone came along and said, Sam, how are you doing? And he goes, not so good under the circumstances. My question for you today is, what are you doing under the circumstances. When God has given you everything to live above your circumstances. I am not discounting the pain that we feel from the virus, from the protesting, from the evil that we're hearing about every day and experiencing. All I am trying to say is that God, through Jesus Christ, has given us the ability to rise above these circumstances so that they are not defeating us and destroying us and taking our joy and our peace all through Jesus Christ. I want to begin by saying that the God made man. He made man in his image, and we know that, and that he breathed his spirit into the life of Adam so that he was a spiritual being, but he... He was a spiritual being, but he was also under authority. But God <clears throat> came to him, and he said, The heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to man. So he said, Adam, I want you to rule. I want you to have dominion over the world. I want you to name all the creatures. I want you to be in charge. Adam was subordinate to God, but all the earth was under his authority from God. In other words, he was in charge of the earth, but he was accountable to God. We are all held accountable to God. We know that Satan came into the scene. His uh, demonic spirit entered into the serpent, and we know what hap happened. He tempted Adam and Eve to disobey God. As soon as he, as soon as Adam gave in to Satan, he lost his control and his ability and his authority because God will not allow us to have authority for evil purposes. 
The snake was a living creature, right? So Adam had dominion over this evil creature, and he, he should have said, get out of here, leave the planet, and never return. But he did not use his authority, and so he allowed a curse to come in, inviting death and destruction into our world. Satan had no authority, but he tapped into man's power. He couldn't have done it unless Adam had given him permission. The enemy cannot have power over your life unless you allow him to have permission. So the Bible says resist the devil. Don't try to argue with him. Don't try to fight. Resist him and flee from him. But God showed mercy to Adam, and he got him out of the garden. And the reason he did this is because if he had eaten from the tree of life, he would have lived forever in this cursed environment. Forever he would have lived under this curse. So now we know that he had lost authority, he had lost power. He still had a choice. But now God... Now God um, he came, he brought Jesus Christ into the world as a man. Jesus Christ came into the world, and he lived a perfect life, so he's a perfect sacrifice. He not only died for our sins, for us to be free from our sins, but he restored authority back to us, to believers. We now have regained authority because of what Jesus Christ has done Jesus entered the world, the world in a body, and I told you that was important, but he was under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and because of this, he disarmed the evil one, and he gave believers the authority to use his name against evil, casting out demons and healing. God uses his ability and his power to destroy evil, the devil's work, but he channels it through those that are born on the earth that are spiritually born again. God has ordained to work through man here on earth. It's very important for us to know that. If we are in Christ, we have his authority and we can access his power because we have Christ living in us and we are identified with him. Bodily, we are here on earth but spiritually, we are in the heavenly realms, seated next to Christ and putting all enemies, as he puts all enemies under his feet, we are going to put all enemies under our feet. This is very important for us to understand that because of Jesus Christ, we now have authority and we have power. Authority is the power or ability to put something in action. And I'm going to talk about that more as I go along. But I'm, I want to say to you that we really need to know who we are. We need to know our standing is before we can use our authority and power effectively in Christ. There is a story of a little boy who loved his father, but his father went to work every day. He was a very busy, successful businessman. And every time he would come home, he would come into the office, and the child was left without being able to talk to the father. So he slipped little notes under the door of the office, trying to get the father's attention. This is not our father in heaven, I want to say to you. Your father in heaven, when we pray to him or when we talk to him, he hears you. He hears it. He cares. In fact, the most important thing to him is his relationship with you. So I want to say to you, you need to understand that your Father in Heaven is not an impersonal Father. He is very active in your life, very caring in your life. He wants to share everything in your life. So for, we need to understand this when we live our relationship out, we live out our journey with God. God is not a faraway father. He's a very involved father. We are his children. He is always with us, 
always providing for us, always protecting, and loving his own as he, and he thoroughly loves interaction. He will not shut his door to his office. He will not shut the door to his heart when his child is calling for him. But sometimes the reality has not really deeply penetrated our hearts quite yet. And so we're still growing in our process of getting to know him. And so when we pray, sometimes we pray like this child or we pray like an orphan or a slave because perfect love has not, we have, we're not grounded in this perfect love that casts out fear. When we pray, like a slave, and we are servants to the Lord, but we're, we're not a slave, just a slave, or just a servant. We are a child and many more other things. A slave may pray like he feels like he has no right to ask. So some people pray like, well, I don't have any right to ask God, but he said to ask. You don't have because you're not asking, so we need to ask. He, he, the slave spends more time asking for forgiveness than praying for abundance. But God has provided an abundant life through Jesus Christ. A slave may live in fear instead of experiencing the tenderness of being loved by his almighty creator and savior and redeemer. There is no intimacy in this prayer. If you pray like an orphan, you may be even reluctant to pray. You were adopted. You are not an orphan. We may feel desperate. Our prayers are desperate, more like begging than having a conversation with our Father. We may feel a great distance between our hearts, but Jesus has broke the distance and said, go directly to the Father. Abundance is a foreign concept for an orphan because they've never experienced it. But all that God has is for us. They have a poverty mentality that fills their prayer lives, and they ask for scraps, and, and, and they expect it. But God is a great God, fully willing and able to do and give great things, and he is honored by us asking and believing. We need to pray like sons and daughters. We are sons and daughters, and you need to know that. We need to get to live, we as sons get to live under the Father's blessings, not under circumstances. God, we get to live under his blessings each and every day. We get to enjoy the abundance of his house. Psalms 36, 8 and 9, you feed them from the abundance of your house, letting them drink your, from your river of delights, for you are the fountain of life, the light by which, which we see. Everything God has is yours. Is that how we're praying? Let me tell you, when my children and my grandchildren come over, you can have whatever you want, eat whatever you want. You want to lay on the couch, do whatever. If you want to borrow this or that, you can borrow it or you can even have it. That's the way my attitude is towards my children. That's God's attitude towards us. We are friends and allies of God. We are in partnership in a mission here on earth because God has chosen to work through man right now to bring heaven on earth. So we are in partnership with the Lord. We are joint heirs of the throne, joining our Father in this battle. What I want to say, too, is that we are overcomers. 1 John 4, 4, you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. An overcomer lives by faith and believes in Jesus. His faith, in fact, is the faith of Jesus Christ. In the King James Version, it says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave up his life for me. If Jesus is living in you, you have access to his faith and his mind. An overcomer knows that God is giving him victory over all trials and all temptations of life. Indeed, he's already given us victory, but we're stuck here in a kingdom clash right now. 
a clash between an evil kingdom and God's kingdom. So we're not experiencing victory, but God is trying to train us to grow up. He's trying to teach us to rule and to reign over the evil in the world. We need to stand up to that bully and tell him he has no place in our lives and not allow him to blow us over with his lies. An overcomer knows that God has given him victory over sin, death, judgment, and fear. Fear. God knows, God, the, the overcomer knows that God gives the victory over Satan and over every spiritual forces. We do not need to be afraid of what's happening in this world today. We need to realize who we are and what we've been called to do. And we have been called to bring heaven on earth and that God's will will be done in our lives. Our authority was restored by Jesus in Matthew 28, 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. And then he in turn hands it over to you and I. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions, to overcome all the power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Are you hearing me, people? We need to stand up because this is our authority. Exercising our authority comes by praying. I have here a wire. We are the outside of this cord. But inside the cord is power. It's electricity. Inside the believer is the power of God, the power of Jesus Christ. But unfortunately, we lay dormant. We don't access that power. But we need to plug it in. Plug it in. Pray. Connect to the source. As soon as you connect to that source, that power is there. God has ordained that he will work through prayer. We have to pray, people, over every single thing. He is sovereign, and yet he not only allows but commands us to exercise our own choices. Choose to pray. He created us giving us free will, but let it be known that his plans and purposes will not be thwarted. He is in control, and though we have authority, we are under his authority, authority and under his rule. So we have to use our authority and our power for his agenda and not our own. Jesus had told, has told us to ask in his name. When you go out into this world, ask in your name. We, we end all of our prayers with, in Jesus' name. Do you understand what that means? John 16, 23, 24, 26. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything because you can go directly to the Lord God. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked anything in my name. Ask and you will receive. This is a promise from Almighty God. And your joy will be complete. In that day, today, you will ask in my name. I'm not saying that I will ask in the, the Father on behalf of you because you can go directly to the Lord now. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and believed that I came from God. Using the, when we pray using his name, we are using the authority of the ruler of all the galaxies to enforce the power on what we have just prayed for. So when we're praying in Jesus' name, we are, accent, we are using Jesus' authority and we are exact, excuse me, accessing his power, applying it to just for, for just what we have asked for. And God grants our requests for the sake of Jesus Christ, for the sake of his son, because only he is worthy. I am not worthy, but he is worthy. So when we are asking in Jesus' name, God's going to grant it because we have come with the authority that Jesus has given to us. He has told us to pray that the kingdom come. 
A kingdom is a realm where a king rules and reigns. The kingdom of God is where God is reigning. It's not in heaven. It can be right in here. God can reign and rule in the heart of a believer, in a heart that is yielded to him. A a child of God must let Christ rule our attitudes and our actions, and he does it by the grace of God. God. God's kingdom here is greatly needed in our world right now, right now. Jesus said that the kingdom is eternal within men. It, it is a, not a geographical location. It is an internal thing where the spirit of the living God lives within us. The born-again man is capable of operating on the same level of faith with God since the spirit of God is living within us. To pray for the kingdom of God is to pray for the progress of what God wants to happen here in this world. To pray for the kingdom of God is also to pray for Jesus to come again. This kingdom of God should be the preoccupation of our minds. Every, the, God's kingdom comes to earth every time a person says, yes, I believe. Yes, I receive you, Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God has come into the world when a soul is saved. The kingdom of God comes through the commitment and desire of God's children. God wants us to learn to reign and rule. He helps, he helps us for this by placing us in circumstances. He places us in circumstances that require prayer and faith. We need to pray against the violence. We need to pray against the disease. We need to pray against murder. We need to pray against evil and hatred. We need to pray that and bring heaven on earth. Let me tell you, we are also to pray for God's will to be done. When we pray, thy will be done, we are praying that God's will will become our will also. And when the Spirit prays in within us, he prays according to God's will. And that he will prevail over all the earth as it is done in heaven. Simply stated, God's will for us is Jesus Christ. He wants all to come to saving faith. When this happened, the Lord comes to live in us, giving us the desire and the ability to obey. Thus, God's will will be done. Literally, Jesus lives out his life in the person that is yielded to him. His power comes through the channel. We have his mind, and and all that he is is accessible to us. We know that God's will for his children is to be joyful, to pray all the time, and to be thankful in all circumstances. Not for all circumstances, but in all circumstances. Even in our circumstances today, we can be thankful that we have the living God to pray for, that we can be thankful that we can come in Jesus' name and we can pray against this evil, that we can be thankful that we are saved and that we are being led in triumphant victory, that we can be thankful that we are not overcome by our circumstances, that we can rise above our circumstances and speak the word of God to our circumstances. His will is that things will be done in Here on earth it is in in heaven. There is no evil, no sickness, no violence, no hatred, no injustice, no murder, no prejudices in heaven. It is not God's will for anyone to be murdered. Anyone. Not children to be used for sexual slavery. Not people dying from, from a virus. That is not God's will. All these things are a result of man's rebellion to God. Our prayer should be that every person and thing on earth be brought into conformity with God's will. Jesus has conquered Satan, but he obviously still is in the process of putting him under his feet. And we are part of that process. We are part of that process. Because he has told us to bind and loose. 
Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for his was not revealed to you, but this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven. Presented in the gospel, we hold the keys. We can present the gospel so that others can enter into heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We need to bind up murder. We need to bind up hatred. We need to bind up violence. And we need to loose righteousness and life and peace and health. We have the authority to do so because we have the authority of Jesus Christ and we are under his authority. Christians can authoritatively... Dis dis Let me say this again. We can use our authority by using the word of God. Whatever is forbidden by him and his word that's what we, we use that against. We use that in all of our judgments. We judge on the basis of God's word. We have to go there. It has to be in God's word. The authority of the church lies in the fact that it has heaven's word on everything pertaining to life and godliness. And when believers are in agreement with God's word, God is in agreement with him, them. The hindrances that we have in our life is we haven't really sometimes come to the place where we totally believe this or we're unaware of it. Our lives are God revealing all of this to us. And a lot of times our prayers are usually focused on our little self-world instead of on what God wants in the bigger picture. Hindrances is Satan who is ruling this worldly kingdom. We can have assurance of a triumphant entry and that God will keep us from falling. God has made full provision for you and I to have a life of holiness. Just as his power has saved us in the first place, so his power energizes us and empowers us to live holy lives and to bring his kingdom here on earth. We can be assured of all of these things because of the priestly work of Christ in our life the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives, the activities of the angelic agencies in our behalf, the new life that we received at conversion, and the instruction of God's word. We have the power to live holy lives and to demolish strongholds in the name of Jesus. Our calling. God has called us out of darkness into light. God has called us to follow Jesus Christ. God has called us into fellowship holiness and to enjoy his love in a relationship. God has called us to return bless, uh, blessing for evil. So when we try to overcome this enemy, we must fight not with swords and fists, but we fight with prayer and faith. We have been called to his her eternal glory. We have been called to use his authority. Christ within us wants us to empower, wants to empower us to live boldly with great expectation of what the Father has in mind for us. And because Jesus is our life and we have in fact already succeeded, because Jesus is our life, we have in fact already succeeded regardless of what unfolds in our circumstances. We have already succeeded because we are in Christ. We need to refuse to be discouraged. We need to re refocus and keep our focus on Jesus Christ. We need to reflect on the victory that is ours. And remember that when we are fighting, whom, remember who you are fighting and who is fighting for you and with you. Jesus Christ is fighting for you and with you in this partnership and in this life, that, this precious relationship that we have in Jesus Christ. 
What I'm trying to say to you today is do not let your circumstances overcome you, but over your cir overcome your circumstances in Christ. He has already given you everything that you can do this. Remember who you are. You are a child of God. You are a soldier in the army of God. Come boldly and pray. Pray for God's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven, and pray for his will to be done, not ours and somebody else's. May God empower you to believe this. May it transform your life. Father in heaven, we come before you, dear Lord, with grateful hearts, grateful that you've already given us the victory in Jesus Christ, grateful that you have given us the ability to overcome all of these trials and tribulations, these circumstances that make us feel defeated, Father, help us to realize that we are not victims, that we are victors in Jesus Christ. Help us to stand up boldly for you, dear Lord, and to fight for your people, to fight for the salvation of all the souls that are waiting, dear Lord. Father, help us to take those kingdom, those keys to the kingdom and open the door to heaven by presenting the gospel to those that need to know about your love and your salvation and all that you've done through Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you that we have the authority to do that in Jesus' name. I thank you that we have the power to do it. It is your power, and you have given us this power to do all that you would have to be done on this earth. And we thank you for it, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.